Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Psalm 112, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Shall be blessed. Hallelujah. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth he will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Praise the Lord. This is a very interesting psalm. The Lord quickened this to me. Uh, and it's talking about, in verse 3, Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Okay. The man that feared the Lord. The man that, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Hallelujah. Surely this is a prophecy of the Lord Jesus, and surely it's also a word for those who belong to the Lord Jesus. Okay, the word wealth there means enough. Okay, it means wealth, it means riches, it means enough. It means, it says uh, in the sense of wealth by implication, enough. Enough. Okay, substance, wealth. All right. He has enough. And you go down to verse uh, verse number 9. He hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor. See? His righteousness endureth forever. Hallelujah. His horn shall be exalted with honor. His horn. The horn always it represents um, you know, power. Okay. It's figuratively it represents power. His horn shall be exalted with honor. Now, look at verse number 4. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. See, that's speaking of the Lord Jesus, and it's speaking of the man who, or, you know, the person who's born again, born anew from heaven, and filled with the Spirit of God. You know, they're full of compassion. You see, that's a sign. That's a fruit of the Spirit. See, that's the fruit of that God wants us to bear is the fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Because when we are the expression of Christ in the earth as we ought to be as Christians, okay, we're going to be like Christ was, who went around healing, uh, doing good, and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. When Jesus met the poor woman at the well, you know, she was poor. She had been married to six men, and the man she was with was not her husband. And Jesus knew this and he knew that she was spiritually dead and, and she had no life and, and Jesus of course didn't have any money at that time to give her in any way or anything but what he had he gave her and he had the life because he is the life See, and that is so much more than money so much more than this world's goods 
it's like I said in the previous video it's not a sin to to be rich and have a lot of stuff in the world it's when the stuff has you you know it's when it when it controls you that's where the sin comes in okay Abraham was a wealthy man a very rich man David was a rich man okay Moses was trained up in all the ways of Egypt I mean he was a very wealthy man but then he he left Egypt and went into the wilderness for 40 years tended the sheep but he was still you know he had a lot of substance but he forsook it all and went and did what the Lord said to do okay and he, he shepherded Israel through the wilderness and and other men Solomon was the richest man that ever lived but yet when you read the book of Ecclesiastes it was empty vanity of vanities all is vanity Hallelujah. You know, he was empty at the end of his life because he had he had uh, disobeyed the command of the Lord, you know, Solomon did, and married all the foreign women and everything, set up all the foreign, you know, all the false altars. And it was just terrible what happened to Solomon. And wealth, you know, enriches it. It brings a snare. Paul tells us that in Timothy, you know, that uh, those that would be rich fall into a snare, you know. So if you're seeking to be rich in this world's goods, you're going to fall into a snare. You know, seek to be like Christ. Say, Father, make me like Christ. Make me like Christ. See? And God blesses people. We know of one man that God blessed. Um, the, the man left his whole business and everything. He was in real estate. And he went and sought the Lord and, and just gave it all up. And, and then the Lord told him, go back into business. And and he did and, and he's just everything he does prospers you know and and uh, and he works for the Lord and and he gives when the Lord you know people go to him or he finds out people need he just gives it to them boom you know and that's what he does and uh, and he even did that with us a couple of years ago uh, we never talked to the man and never even we don't have communication with him or anything but he found out we needed some help and he helped us and didn't even know us but he knew the Lord was using them at that time to help us and praise the Lord for that uh, so you have to be moved by the Spirit of God uh, in what to do but know that wealth and riches doesn't necessarily mean money it means the Lord Jesus ultimately how much of Jesus is showing forth in our life how much of Jesus Christ the fruit of the Spirit is coming out see that's what makes one rich and filled with compassion and righteous. See, our righteousness endureth forever. You see. And it's the righteousness which is Christ. Hallelujah. It's the righteousness which is Christ Jesus. So, uh, don't let the devil dog you down. If you have an overabundance of this world's goods, okay, if you're seeking to be right with God and, and to be pleasing to God and you're, you're concerned about, uh, you know, about all your wealth in this world, okay, and, and you have an overabundance, you know, just go to the Lord and say, Lord, what do you want me to do with this, you know? Because you have more than you can use, okay? And the Lord will instruct you. Give it to this person. Give it to that. Give it to the poor, see? Or give it to, to ministries that will use it for the poor. Not ministries that will use it on themselves, okay? It's okay to give to charity. I said in previous video, you know, not to charity, but what I mean is don't give to the to the charities that have an overabundance where you see what I'm saying and they're hanging on to it it's in the and a lot of these big mega churches they're loaded okay give to the poor in some ministries they they have street ministries and they go out and feed the, the poor uh, I know Darren Smith and Streetscape Ministries down in Galveston does but you know like uh, I believe like if the Lord sent us down to Galveston to go work with him for a weekend or two, you know, we would just give to the poor or, or out of our pocket. You see what I mean? We wouldn't give it to him to give to the poor. You see what I mean? Because when you see a poor person in need, you are quickened by the Spirit. He quickens you to go help that person. You go be obedient and help him. See? One of our viewers, God bless her, she she's that happened with her, and and uh, she saw a poor man, and the Lord quickened in her spirit, and she went home, and she got some stuff and she went back and she helped the man you know and that's what Christians will do that's what the true spirit of Christ in us will draw and do that and I'll leave you with this in the Balkans you know 
uh, I was reading, like I said in the previous video about the Balkans uh, and Yugoslavia, which is a just a war-torn country for centuries and centuries and centuries. You know, very familiar with war, unlike America, where we're not very familiar with it. On our own continent, we've had the Civil War. That was well over 147 years ago. Uh, we're not familiar with war, but they are in Yugoslavia. But when people go to their house, the poor, they make sure they feed them. And it's a great shame to them if they don't have anything to offer a guest that goes to their house. And in America, it's not like that. Even in Christian homes sometimes. We've been in people's houses and they don't even offer us a drink of water, you know, much less a meal. And and it's very sad because that has to be the forefront of our heart has to be Christ and Christ is always giving 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 that's his nature to give first he gives his life hallelujah see and then all the fruit of the spirit and then he supplies every need according to his riches hallelujah and glory praise the Lord be encouraged in this hour uh, read Psalm 112 I'll post it in the more info. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you all.